is a cervical vertebrae. Uh, we know this actually for a couple reasons. Uh, on the posterior side here, you can see this forked spinous process. If we come towards the anterior side, remember this is the body, so anterior, posterior. Towards the anterior side here, you can actually see these red vertebral arteries. Remember, vertebral arteries are the blood vessels that travel through the region of your neck, your cervical region, and they move through these transverse foramina. Again, these are only found in the cervical region. So nonetheless, cervical vertebrae, but what I really want to concentrate on here in this video is what's happening in the middle. So this is obviously our central nervous system. This is our spinal cord. And we have spinal nerves that lead information in and carry information out. Same on this side, information goes in, information goes out, in and out to the spinal cord. So let's start here. When we come in, you'll see this bulb right here. This is the dorsal root ganglia. Remember dorsal means the posterior side. So the dorsal root ganglia leads to this dorsal root. This is sensory information coming in and it makes its way in to this gray matter here. We have on both sides the posterior gray horns. We have on both sides the lateral gray horns. We have on both sides the anterior gray horn. So again, sensory information comes in and then motor commands would come out this ventral root. You see the ventral root there. Again, just a little bit, you can see it on this side. Dorsal root, ventral root. The gray matter is surrounded by white matter. So the gray matter actually includes this region in here as well. This is the gray commissure. Right in the middle is the central canal. But the white matter that surrounds it, again, comes in these columns. Posterior white column, lateral white column, anterior white column. There's an anterior median fissure right through here as well. Posterior median sulcus would be this region right here. If we take this guy and come up for a little closer inspection here, what you'll see surrounding the spinal cord itself are what we call the spinal meninges. So the spinal meninges are the layers, essentially, protective layers that surround the spinal cord. We know that the whole thing, of course, is encased in bone. That's your, that's your spinal column, okay? But the spinal cord itself doesn't just rely on the bone for protection. We have, like I said, these spinal meninges, the layers that basically surround it. And when we look here, what we have are three layers, the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. So between each of these layers, there's actually spaces. This is what we call the epidural space. Epi means upon, epidural upon the dura mater. So the epidural space is here. Then we have the dura mater. Then this thin, thin, thin black line here on this model represents the subdural space. Then as we go deep to that, we have the arachnoid mater. Where I'm pointing my little pointer in here, this is what we would call the subarachnoid space. Then from there, we have the pia mater, and the pia mater is basically shrink-wrapped around the outside of our spinal cord. So from outside to in, it would be epidural space, dura mater, subdural space, arachnoid mater, subarachnoid space, pia mater, and then spinal cord. One more thing you can also see on this model if you look closely, are the denticulate ligaments. Denticulate ligaments, you'll see one here on this side. You'll see a representation of another on this side, again, sort of helping to hold and stabilize things in place.